Today we're headed deep in the weeds with hollow body frogs. Hollow body frog baits like these are killer baits in dense cover. Unlike other topwater lures with treble hooks that hang underneath, these lures typically have two hooks that curve up on top of the bait so they can be used over thick vegetation without getting hung up. And they're no longer limited to just basic frogs. You can find them now with kicking feet and you'll even find hollow body ducks, mice, rats, spiders, and even dragonflies. A bass sees a real frog as nothing more than a big defenseless sack of calories. There's no better way to fill their belly than to ambush a big clueless frog from beneath. This is why frog lures are such amazing baits for big bass. And they catch a lot more than just bass. Up here in the north, we catch lots of pike, muskie, and bowfin on frogs too. In other states, they're used for things like snakeheads. Frogs come in a lot of different sizes and styles. They tend to be weedless with their hooks hugging tightly against the back of the frog's body. The body itself is usually plastic or rubber and hollow to keep it very buoyant. You can toss these into the deepest, sloppiest vegetation and twitch or drag the frog right over everything. You can also toss them right up onto the shore or over a log, which makes it look like your frog just jumped into the water or fell off of a log. A bass sitting along the bank or under that log will usually rush right over. When you throw a frog into heavy vegetation, you'll want to use braided line, at least 20 pound braid. You can cast a frog a long way, so you need to make sure that you can set the hook effectively on a long cast. Monofilament line stretches too much, fluorocarbon line is too heavy, but braid floats and it doesn't stretch. That makes it the best line for frog fishing. If you're fishing in duckweed or submergent vegetation for 3 to 5 pound bass, 20 pound braid is usually fine. But if you're tossing into lily pads or you're chasing really big bass or other big fish, you'll need some serious power to get that fish out of the cover. You'll want to bump up to 50 pound or even 65 pound braid to get those fish out effectively. Once you get a fish on, you need to get it up to the surface and drag it back right over all the plants. It's best to use a medium heavy or heavy power rod and a fairly high speed reel to help you get that fish back quickly. You can use a bait casting reel or you can use a spinning reel, whichever one you like better. Most people choose a bait caster because they can handle heavy line better and most spinning reels have pretty slow gear ratios between about 5 to 1 and 6 to 1. But you can find some higher speed spinning reels like the Daiwa Regal LT 2500 which has a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio or the Casking Speed Demon which has a super fast 7.4 to 1. That's incredibly fast for a spinning reel. If you let a fish run down into the plants you're going to be pulling back a 5 pound bass with 80 pounds of vegetation. Good luck, most of the time you're going to lose that fish or just get stuck because you can't move the mass of vegetation anymore. Use a short mono or floral leader if you're fishing where there are a lot of pike or muskies or snakeheads. 30 pound mono or floro is a good choice for leaders. Tie it directly to your main line with a knot like an FG or a double uni. Even just 4 to 6 inches of leader will give you pretty solid protection from sharp teeth. If you're fishing where pike and muskie are common, be prepared for a pike to rip the legs off of your frog. But don't think a frog doesn't work with just one leg. You can keep using it and the fish will still slam it. From a fish's perspective, a one-legged frog is a much easier meal to catch than a two-legged frog is. My favorite frog is the scum frog Little Bigfoot. This is a paddle tail style frog that I use like a weedless version of a whopper plopper. It casts right into the thick stuff, but it works equally well in open water. A lot of strikes come right at the edge of the vegetation and the extra action from a paddle tail frog can get you lots of reaction strikes from fish sitting on that edge looking to ambush some prey that comes out. The ideal spot for topwater frog fishing is where the surface mat is thick but the submergent vegetation is sparse or full of pockets. This allows for a lot of cover and open hunting lanes for predators. They have good visibility of the surface mat and plenty of space to maneuver and fly up to the surface to grab a frog. If you can't see any rings from your frog or a trail behind your frog, the floating mat may be too thick. A really thick mat can absorb the vibration from your frog and make it really tough for a fish to spot it. Popping frogs can be used to make a little more noise. They spit a bunch of water as you twitch them, which can be good to entice a reaction strike or attract fish in from a longer distance. Long tails or legs on a frog will often result in missed fish that strike the tails and miss the hooks altogether. Fish attacking a frog often nail it hard and just clamp down on part of the lure, so you want to make sure they hit the frog's body and not just the tails. I tend to cut back the tails to just a few inches long at most, so the bass key in on the body. The powerful back legs of a frog are its only means of defense and escape, so biologically it makes sense for a predator to attack the legs first and then slurp in the rest of the frog. 
Another thing that can cause missed fish is hooks that are pushed into the body a little. Whenever you open up a new frog or after you catch a big fish, you should check the hooks to make sure they're just slightly raised above the frog's body. If needed, bend those hooks out a little bit so there's just a little tiny gap between the hooks and the body. When you get a strike, this is the hardest part for most fishermen. You need to wait a second or two to set the hook, especially on frogs with long tails. A fish will often only get part of the frog in its mouth during the strike and you want to wait until it sucks the rest of the frog into its mouth before setting the hook. It's hard to hold back when you see your frog get demolished, but you will hook a lot more fish if you wait a second. I almost always lose my first frog fish of the day because I get too excited and I don't wait long enough to set the hook. Early fall is my favorite time to use hollow body frogs. The vegetation is starting to die back for the winter at that time, which opens up a lot of pockets. The dying vegetation is also easier to drag a fish through if you get a big one tangled up in the plants. But I start fishing them in May when the green frogs and leopard frogs become more active along the shoreline, and I keep fishing them all the way through September and into October. I hope this video was helpful to you. Good luck frog fishing. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.